Hey there, this is Dr. Corey Gilbert with the Healthy Marriage Inner Circle and the Warrior Marriage Podcast. And today we're going to look at some research from John Gottman. This is from what my uh, marriage and uh, marital premarital class that I teach at um, under, in undergrad. Um, and so I want to look through some of the research that actually impacts how I view marriage, how I do conflict, and some really neat stuff, some tools that actually that we can actually use um, to have a better, healthy marriage. So um, if you haven't read John Dr. Gottman's book, um, Why Marriages Succeed or Fail and How You Can Make Yours Last. This is from the 90s. It's an incredible read, incredible tool. Um, Dr. Gottman's a researcher in Seattle and um, does has the Love Lab and talks through or actually does research with couples. So it's actual data, not just anecdotal, not just stories from people, random people. It's actual um, data we can use, which is really neat. So question that he brings up and something that we need to think about is, does similarity in opinions safeguard against divorce? As you think of marrying or thinking of your spouse, um, is that really the most important thing? In the 90s, we talked about compatibility a lot, that you need to be compatible. And yes and no. What is that really the right piece of the puzzle to, to create a healthy, strong, vibrant marriage. And their research basically said it does not seem to be true at all. So what he found, Gottman found that couples who initially had complaints about each other's attitudes were among the most stable marriages as the years went on. That's very revealing. If you have complaints, what that actually means is you're seeing reality. (laughs) If you can't see reality, you have no complaints. Um, Dr. Amon talks about this as being cocaine brain. So the same centers that light up when I'm high on cocaine is, are the same centers that light up when I'm high in love, infatuated. It's interesting data to think about in terms of how this affects my body, my brain chemistry, my choices, and how I view someone else. So if I can actually see problems and forgive those and still stay, I'm actually more likely to have a healthy marriage. And much more important than viewing compatible views or having compatible views is how couples work out their differences. This is the key. This is where I spend a lot of time teaching on is um, if you how you conflict matters. Premaritally, we can see this. We can see that if a couple actually has good skills in handling conflict, they're much more likely to have a healthy marriage. Some of the more other research from Gottman said that he can predict watching one fight from a couple with a 90 plus percent accuracy whether a couple would stay together four or five years later. Really cool. That's a really key. So here's another interesting statement. Occasional discontentment, especially during a marriage's early years, seems to be good for the union in the long run. Again, it's reality. Marital bliss and perfect compatibility are not the only glue that holds couples together and may not even be the most important glue. This is why research really matters. Good research will actually point out some of the flaws in our ways of thinking that kind of seep in or filter in through um, opinion or experiences from one or two people or multiple people that aren't based in reality. A lot of the opinions we have about parenting, it's based in experience or what's been told to us, not reality and even what research says is healthy. Um, a lot of our opinions on a lot of things are actually just from someone else. We actually haven't thought it through, and the research tells us otherwise. Um, studies from like Levison and Gottman in the 80s proved for the first time that marital satisfaction is linked to spouses' physiological responses to one another. They showed us that it was indeed possible to get couples to act naturally toward one another despite the intrusion of video cameras, electrodes, and microphones. So couples would come into their love lab in Seattle, be hooked up to all these machines, this chair that's called the jigglometer that if if any movement or fidgeting um, is recorded, sweat, heart rate, everything, and then they would induce a a fight, they would start a fight, if you will, or get into an argument based off the previous um, interviews, record that, and then take this data, and they actually found that the physiological responses are the data that really matters, not the emotional not the even what's said, the even um, think. A lasting marriage results from a couple's ability to resolve the conflicts that are inevitable in any relationship. This is the key. Do you know how to handle a conflict, resolve it, and move on? Or do you have a pile of conflicts over here that have not been resolved and there's some, there's some problems? Now, you've 
seen some other research I've talked about, Scott Stanley and others, um, that actually talk about 69% of problems are not solvable. What do you do with that? This isn't about solving them, resolving them. As in, you know what, I may never change this in them, and I'm going to actually be okay with that. And I'm going to pray for them when I pick up their socks. I'm going to pray for them when... And what's funny is as I do that intentionally and I love them, they actually do change a little. Not a lot always, but a little. Just like the way they love us changes us. Gottman believes that we grow in our relationship by reconciling our differences. Not fixing them, not changing them. A lot of times it's dying to certain things or certain expectations I have. And I choose to lay that aside. I, I'm not going to focus on that. The honest truth is every husband and every wife can look at their spouse at some point in time or many, many points in time and go, who did I marry? Was I crazy? Was I high? What's wrong with me? That's normal. And what needs to be normal is to laugh and then move on and stay committed and be all in and reconcile differences, which takes work, it takes skills. A lot of us didn't gain those skills in our home. My wife and I learned to be nice. We came from great homes, and nice isn't always the goal either. So we've learned now after 16 and a half years that it's not always about being nice. Sometimes what we were missing, and I've said this for over 10 years, that we need to be honest. But is there a permission to be honest? It's back to we need to be able to reconcile our differences. And I'll show you in a minute some the conflict styles, which actually helps um, helps us understand better the the differences that we actually have, which is interesting. So, this is the interesting thing here. The closer a marriage comes to settling into one of these three adaptations, the better its chances for permanency seem to be. And you're going to maybe see that one of these fits you, and you're going to maybe see that that maybe it's one or two and there's kind of a blend, but here's the point, and you'll see it in a minute. So to classify marriage, and this is, again, the love lab and the research they do, we look at the frequency of fights, the facial expressions, the physiological responses of both partners during the confrontation, as well as what they say to each other in the tone of voice. And see, most of us look at those last two in our marriage, not the other pieces. Frequency of fights facial expressions, and physiological responses. If we're in a relationship and my heart goes through the roof, you know, going beating fast, over actually 100 beats per minute, which actually isn't that much, I can't think straight. There needs to be this permission to go, I need to stop, I need to pause, I need to tap out for a minute, calm down, and then we can re-engage. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Okay, three styles. These are the three that are seen as healthy um, styles. The validating marriage, compromise often and calmly work out their problems to mutual satisfaction. And so there was an example of Betty and Bert from um, what I teach in class. Conflict avoiding marriage, agree to disagree, rarely confronting their differences head on. And then the volatile marriage, conflicts erupt often, resulting in passionate disputes, but they take care of it. And each of these are actually healthy. Why? In their own way, they're dealing with the problems and moving forward, not letting them mound up or turning into the other two. The other two, because there's five styles, the other two are the toxic, toxic, toxic ones that tend to destroy relationships. These are actually healthy. Now, me personally, I look at the volatile marriage and I go, you're crazy. How, why would you treat them that way? John's research, John Gottman's research has said, no, this is actually one of the healthy styles. They get it out and they move on. It's actually really, really great. So one of the mistakes marriage counselors do a lot is they try to make couples become more like they're comfortable. No, it's not our job. It's to help you find your style that's the best, that's not one of those other two we'll talk about in a minute, but it's actually one of these three or a blend of these three. My wife and I, again, we've learned to be nice and we've actually grown over the years to be a little more honest at times. Um, is it bad? No. Does it have its negatives? Yes. I look at some couples I do premarital with and I'm like, man, you've got this down. You know how to conflict in ways that even I don't yet. And I'm proud of you. Now here's the issue. But they have other areas that they got to work in. There's not a single one of us that has this all together. And so being able to admit that and accept that and then move forward is really, really important. 
Gottman's research suggests that all three styles are equally stable and bode equally well for the marriage's future. They have found that all comes down to a simple mathematical formula. No matter what style your marriage follows, you must have at least five times as many positives as, as negatives moments together if your marriage is to be stable. So it's Gottman's five to one ratio. All right, so this is John Gottman, five to one ratio. Um, he talks here again, the five positives to one negative. This is a, an important equation where he's quantified as he's watched and watched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of couples to see what is it that helps them be strong and handle, handle life and where do things fall apart. And it's five to one, five positive to one. And it's crazy how much we can remember of that one. That's why it takes so much to make up for it. So here are the four strategies to handling these. Um, to make a healthy, lasting marriage. So major goal, break the cycle of negativity. How to calm yourself so that flooding doesn't block your communication. Flooding is that sweat, heart rate goes up, kind of this overwhelm physiologically. How do I, when it starts happening, how do I calm myself down? And that's a, a, I've got to learn that skill. How to speak and listen non-defensively so that your discussions will be more productive. When they say something, it's not for me to, to disagree and fight back and give my explanation. I need to learn to listen. And a lot of times that's missing in, in a relationship. It's back and forth, back and forth, but no one's heard anything. It's always just defensive fighting. We'll look in a minute that, of that unhealthy one, the unhealthy two. How to validate each other as well as your relationship, even or especially when the going gets tough. I need to be my best, a best friend to, to my spouse and to be an encourager and to, hey, it's going to be okay. We're in this together no matter what. Instead of some that worry if the person's going to even, you know, be there. So here's an example of this. Husband and wife fight. Husband goes out to the car and drives off to take, to take a drive to cool off. And this is what I've, you've heard me talk about, permission if he has permission to do that, as in they've talked about it ahead of time, then she'll go on with her, whatever she was doing, and her heart rate won't go up, and she, they'll be fine, and he'll come back, and they deal with the, the conflict, and they move forward. But if not, he leaves, and she freaks out. There's not been that conversation ahead of time, so she's like, is he going to come back? Are we okay? Is it over? Are we getting a divorce? We become our worst enemy in that moment. But we, as a couple, didn't talk through what do I need or what's okay, what's acceptable. We need to be able to validate each other. And then this fourth one, how to overlearn these principles so that your new skills become almost second nature. We've got to be able to learn um, to you know, break that cycle of negativity and to have a different dance, if you will, a different pattern. So the two... Um, portraits of marital meltdown. Couples who have failed to find an equilibrium in one of the three stable types of marriages are these two. The hostile engaged, which is argue often and hotly, insults, name calling, put downs, sarcasm, and the hostile detached. So they are more on the volatile in terms of that hostile engaged, but it's over the top and they do the four horsemen of the apocalypse, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and then stonewalling is way beyond the others. But they're hostile and they're engaged. They fight and they don't fight clean. Or hostile and then whew, that's the stonewalling detached. These are unhealthy. These are not acceptable. These are cancerous to a relationship and to a marriage. Are, do we criticize at times? Yes, but it's when it becomes the norm. Do we get contemptuous? Can we kind of hate? Yeah, I can feel that. But it's when it becomes kind of the, the DNA of us at this point. Do we get defensive? Absolutely. But when, it's, when it starts becoming the way we function, and then stonewalling is this point where I just kind of put up a wall and I'm done. My heart rate doesn't go up. I don't respond to you. This is a problem. So I hope these are helpful for you to think through the five, point, five to one ratio um, these different, the five different styles of conflict, and which one do you fall in? Um, if you need help figuring that out, if you need help processing this, or if you're in one of these two, you need to get help if you want this marriage to stay together. And even if you don't want your marriage to stay together, we still need help. Um, you're called to love and honor and, and 
uh, lead and be the husband or wife that God wants you to be in that marriage, not to, okay, I'm done, go on to the next. Um, so get help. Find a counselor. Find a pastor. Find a coach. Find someone that can actually walk you through learning some of these skills because they are something that we can learn and have a very different dance as a couple that changes you, changes them, and changes your family tree. Um, you can find out more about me at healinglives.com. Um, book a marriage breakthrough at drcory.org, and I'd love to talk to you and serve your family um, in the future. So bless you and your marriage, and may you have a marriage that you're proud of.